the resource and admission control function is a service provided by the next generation network architecture to serve both the transport stratum and the service stratum comprises certain network elements and it has certain distributed nature the deployment designs and options that we can have has a direct impact on the kind of services that we can get the administrative control that we can obtain and the interoperability we can get between the policy decision and policy en enforcement functional entities we will first understand the need to have such variety in deployment and then we'd look at the deployment architectures themselves the modules in the RACF are basically the functional entities which perform specific tasks to realize the QoS provisioning. Now they also have a relationship between the service and transport stratum entities. The RACF performs QoS provisioning either in conjunction with the service control function or without the incorporation of the service control function. This leads to three options that can be considered as different deployment architectures. The first one is when the service control function is involved as an intermediary. The second one is the RSCF performs QoS control without the intermediation of uh, the SCF. And the third one is RSCF is now common both for the access and core networks. So we'd look at the diagrams, then we are going to understand them in detail. Let's look at the scenario where the resource and admission control function is performed by the intermediation of the service control function. So here we see we have the service stratum including the SCF, it is being shown to you here. At the transport stratum, we have the RACF. The RACFs of the core and access networks are talking to each other via SCF. It means the QS control is actually being dictated through the involvement of the SCF. What are the pros and cons? Let's look at them. Since the access and core networks are separate domains, so as such, within the RACF, the policy decision functional entities of the core and the access networks are not going to communicate with each other. Only indirect communication is possible through the service control function. It actually means all the signaling which are performed for QS control is coming via the service stratum functions. It means the application layer is spelling out its QS functional requirements and then the SCF is dictating the RSCF to mediate between the core and access networks. The second option is when there is no mediation between the two RSCFs through SCF and uh, these RSCFs both for the access and core network are managed independently and they communicate with each other directly. It means the signaling for QS control takes place between the two RSCFs. The service control function in this case is now the scope of the core network and as such it is not communicating with the access network. Uh, that is exactly uh, what is mentioned in here that uh, the access and core networks are independent domains. Each domain has its own RACF. These RACFs communicate with each other. Uh, correspondingly, their uh, uh, PDFEs uh, are going to talk to each other uh, and there's no involvement of SCF in intermediation as such. And then the last option is once we have uh, a single administrative control, 
both for the core network as well as the access network. In that case, we are not going to see much involvement of SCF. In fact, the RSCF with single administrative control actually results into more um, smooth and uh, harmonious interaction of the PDFEs both for the access and core networks. Uh, since uh, the PDFEs are part of the RSEF, so as such, uh, we are not going to see two PDFEs and there's just going to be one PDFE. Um, but uh, the interesting thing is for these PDFEs to implement the policies, we need the policy enforcement functional entity. Now, the policy enforcement functional entity actually exercises the policy or enforces the policy in relation with the transport uh, transport radio control functional entity. Now, the TRCFE actually is going to be different for the access and core networks because it is dependent upon the underlying technology.